And I hope you're also blessed by actually spending time counseling people. Uh, we learn as we teach. Uh, so, so as we share these truths with others, uh, we, we get them more deeply in our own hearts. Are we up and running? Are we still? Okay. All right. Um, okay. As I said earlier, we missed you. You've become very dear to us. Uh, so we are excited to be back. There we go. Okay, I may have to position so I can see that the slides better. Um, okay, so what we'll be doing is uh, after this session, the next one is talking about what we call the big picture. To help us avoid the biggest mistake that biblical counselors make. As soon as I'm, I'm going to run through this review very quickly. And then we'll have time for some testimony from the Projects for Growth. And the rest of our time together, we'll be talking about specific issues with which people struggle. The specific issues we'll be talking about are family issues, husband, wife, parenting. How to counsel, for, with, uh, how to counsel people struggling with sexual sin. Peacemaking, finances. Uh, anger. Depression, envy, jealousy. Talk a little bit about spiritual warfare. Godly singleness. We'll also talk about syncretism. And that's actually kind of a new topic for me, so I'll be uh, asking for feedback afterwards. And as always, whenever we study anything related to biblical counseling, uh, we'll be asking God to work in our hearts. Uh, we can only share what we have. And as we look through all these specific issues, we're always going to be looking at the heart issue. And many of our heart issues uh, manifest themselves in different ways. So it could be that even if you and I don't struggle with the specific sin that we'll be talking about, oftentimes God still convicts us of our own idols and our own heart uh, that, that we can uh, repent of and, and grow spiritually. Okay, so now a quick review of modules one and two. 
Why do we counsel or do anything for God? What do you think? <laughs> yes, for God's glory. And, and what does that mean? Uh, and because we use that term a lot, we do this for the glory of God. And I think one important way to look at it is whenever we manifest God's character that glorifies Him. So spiritual growth is always growing more in the character of Christ. Our life as a believer, I think, is summed up in Romans 8, 28 and 29. That everything that happens to us in our life is for the purpose of shaping us into the image of Christ. And when we grow spiritually, again, when we reflect his character, we glorify him. Because anything good that you see in me and any spiritual growth is because of him. Okay, a couple of questions that we answered. When did counseling begin? Of course, it began in Genesis 1 and 2 when God spoke to Adam. Because we were never created to be autonomous, to be completely independent. We were created to be dependent on God and receive revelation from Him. So we can never understand man, we can never understand ourselves apart from God and who He is and what He created us for. When did the first bad counseling come? Oops, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> um, what, what is our response to God and His counsel? To believe that God's Word is true and that it's good. And God's ways are not our ways, so sometimes it's difficult. But if we, we understand who God is, we understand how He reveals Himself to us, we know it's true and we know it's good. Okay, so now, when did the first bad counseling come? There we see in Genesis 3 when, uh, when Satan tempted Eve and Adam to not believe God's word and not believe it was good. He tempted our first parents to doubt God's word and doubt God's uh, goodness towards them. And when they believed that lie and acted upon that lie, that was the first sin. And that basic, uh, that basic understanding is the same for us. If, if we do not act on God's word, believing it's true and good, we fall into sin. 
So what is biblical counseling? Remember our short definition. Uh, simply the ministry. So it's it's something we do to bless and help others. Graciously applying God's word. Uh, scripture always tells us that when we, as we convince people to do it lovingly, gently, and graciously. So applying the truths of the Bible to the challenges of life. And we have a longer definition. Okay, it's action or process. It could be one time or it could, we could meet several times. And I like to, I like to eat the part where say a concerned believer, someone who's generally uh, lovingly reaching out to another believer. Or it could be two or three of us or more counseling two or three other people. Where we confront people with the truth of the Bible. Speaking truth in love. Uh, but sometimes telling them that no, the struggle that you are blaming on others is actually sin. And we scripturally instruct from the pages of the Bible. Uh, either a sinning or a suffering believer. Biblical counseling isn't always about confronting sin, it's often about comforting sufferers. For the purpose of affecting change in the person that glorifies God. So biblical counseling is God-centered and God-focused. And of course, who should do it? Everybody. Uh, we want pastors to come to this training not so they can do all the work of the ministry. But they can train you and I to do the work of the ministry. Pastors should counsel, they should be ministering the word both publicly and privately. But the idea of one-on-one -on -one discipleship and one-on-one -on -one counseling is something that should be going on between all believers. Okay, and uh, how, how would we describe progressive sanctification? Uh, this process, we spent a lot of time on that in Module 2. And Module 1. This little diagram or something similar I draw for almost everyone I counsel. Uh, 
Because I want them to understand that growth in holiness, growth in sanctification is a process. If you notice the, the, uh, the sanctification part as its ups and downs, Success and failure, but the overall line is up. And it's important for people to understand this. It's important for people to understand it. Okay, have you seen this before? All right, we spent a lot of time on this. Uh, of course, our circumstances, I'll run through this quickly because we have spent a lot of time on it. Our sinful responses. Which stem from the idols in our hearts. And result in consequences. Which is usually why people are coming for counseling. Is this the reason people are coming for counseling? Of course, so we know that we can never go straight from the bad tree to the good tree. We first have to explain gospel truth. So then our heart motives change. Because we want to please God, we get uh, we we have obedient responses. Which result in blessings. Which result in blessings. And the blessings are not uh, a change in circumstances. Uh, it's peace in my heart. It's deeper relationship with God. And usually better relationship with others. Now hopefully over the, the course of uh, your projects for growth, you answered all these questions in your life. And, and again, it's not a bad idea to have this and draw this for people when you're counseling. And asking them to apply those, each, each of those questions to their own lives. Okay, and when we're counseling people, they always come in with with the uh, the thorny uh, uh, their their sinful responses and and the consequences. Which they see as the problem. And we want to help them see what the real problem is. And how to address the real problem. So always helping people and ourselves to look at our sinful desires and our sinful motives. Hey, we have three what we call grand themes of biblical counseling. 
Number one is biblical sufficiency that the Bible is enough to address all aspects of life. Number two is that uh, it's an every believer ministry. This is something that should be going on within local churches, helping helping one another within the body. And uh, that is heart-based change. Uh, there are many uh, secular uh, ways of counseling that are behavior-based change. But even if they succeed, they don't bring spiritual growth. Okay, we had our seven key elements. Uh, we're all, we build a relationship, establish that first. And we establish it continually. Establish the relationship continually. We want to get the facts, find out what's happening in the person's life. We want to provide biblical hope that scripture does address the issue you're struggling with. We wanted to find the problem. To find it accurately, it's really a heart-based problem. It's a disordered worship. We're worshiping something other than God. Or it could be suffering. It may not be sin. It may be suffering. And we want to teach the truth. Truth about what? We're teaching theology. About uh, Chris, in other words, uh, the truth about God Himself. Christology, who Christ is, what He has done. What progressive sanctification looks like. And then we get to the Bible specific instruction about the issue they're struggling with. Instruction précise à la tour la la na mazava tana because can you hold on your means? Provide some accountability. Na mecha tamir na jekt. Remember that uh, people don't change from the time they spend with you. As a dinfa, swim to the ulla, no leaf tona, la ni merakam no footen. They they change from the time they spend in scripture. As they study and pray that the Holy Spirit would reveal Himself to them. That He would reveal their own hearts to themselves. Which is why we need to give them the projects for growth. Project for growth should always be primarily scripture study. Scripture memorization, that we get God's word in our mind and in our heart. And then it's good to include other biblical material. 
ary manampy tsara ihany koa ny mampiasa fitaovana arabebo afa perhaps sermons or articles or books as long as we're primarily first and foremost using the scripture um, it also includes prayer that they should be doing intense prayer about uh, four other people and again that God would help them uh, we always need to make sure people we're counseling are also connected to a local body of Christ. They should be active in a body where they are known and they are accountable to people within that body. And of course, the last one is plan your ministry. Where we do want to pray for the people we're counseling, we do want to prepare for the time that we'll be with them. We need to do our own study so that we can uh, accurately handle God's word. And and properly apply it to, to the circumstances we're counseling. As always, the problem is not the problem. We know the heart is the problem. Uh, we need to see that for ourselves and help others to see that. So as biblical counselors, we're not in the problem-solving business. Uh, we're in the business of, of helping believers change hearts for God's glory. And helping them understand the grace of God that enables that change to occur. Let me see here. We have a little bit of time. Okay, first of all, um, let's do our scripture memory together. Okay. Um, need to start here. So it's, of course, I can only say it in English. Second Corinthians 5. Verses 9 and 10. And in 